Hey Cats, it's Ed Rod Stewart Bud here. Today I've got a rundown for you on a recent race that was a bit of a letdown. I took on the Great Bristol Run 2024. This year though, sadly, weather put pay to any PBs. Let's take a closer look. Thanks for joining me on the channel, friends. It's always appreciated. Do hit that subscribe button. It's free of charge, don't you know? Also, give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. You're going to have to put up with my Rod Stewart-like tones today. I feel fine. It just seems to have a bit of a sore throat. Maybe it's hay fever or something, but... Yeah, I'm all right, don't worry about me. So I took on the Great Bristol Half Marathon 2024. There's also a 10K that starts a little bit earlier in the day. Slightly longer drive from Yeovil over to Bristol for me. Did take a little bit longer than usual. Lots of traffic and then a bit of a detour. The area where I normally park up for the race was completely full. I think they sold out the event this year. Though I did manage to get to the start line at a reasonable time. There were some really long toilet queues as per usual at this event and everything was just a little bit rushed. The main event area before the race was really busy. I've never seen so many people there. And there was this air of anxiety I suppose mainly due to the hot weather conditions that we have here in the UK right now. A lot of you might say well you know 20, 21 degrees isn't that hot when you consider that the average weather conditions here in the UK about 10 degrees across the year and that hasn't changed for like 100 years then that tells you everything you need to know about the weather. I was armed with the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Paris for this one along with my Nike Aero Swift Advance half tights and the classic UYN Runners 5 socks. Marched over to the start line and managed to get there around about half ten. Already I could feel there were some warm conditions. The sun was out and it was pretty toasty. The race organisers did put out an email the day before suggesting that the race wasn't going to be one for PBs. And they were absolutely right. I tried to stay very hydrated that morning and the day before in fact. But I think three drink stations on the event course was always going to be a bit of an issue. Started out strongly heading out along the portway, soon realised that pushing really hard today in the heat was going to be a fool's errand. I like running everybody, I go out running almost every single day, but I have learnt when to push and when to hold back and it was certainly one of those days today. When you learn that kind of skill, you know not to go out and run really hard when it's very windy, just going to injure yourself. Slowing down the pace on those frosty mornings can stop you from slipping over or perhaps hitting the treadmill on those very rainy days when it could be slippery out there. So today was one of those days I did check the weather conditions out the day prior and on the morning and at around 11 or 12 they suggested it was going to be about 21 degrees. Now my watch reckoned it was about 18 or 19 but I think certainly in a lot of the sections on the portway you've got no cover whatsoever. I just kept seeing people heading for any shade they could find. In the UK as I said that's pretty warm. Normally about 10 degrees C is the average across the year. Most of my training's been in that temperature so yeah at the four mile turning point on the portway I started feeling pretty dodgy and I just called it. I wasn't going to try pushing it any further. I was experiencing some lightheadedness. My stomach was starting to sort of turn over. And when I got to the second drink station a little bit later on, I just decided to stop and actually drink some of the water that was in the bottle. Those smaller ones that they were giving out. And if you tried to run with them, the water was just going everywhere. Eased it back to about 7 minutes 20 per mile pace and just coasted along in the shade from there on. I think having the headphones has certainly helped a little bit, took my mind away from it, and I just concentrated on the scenery, really, and the people that were out there. And in fairness, the portway is pretty pleasant. Managed to get a good couple of shots of the bridge there to show my son, because he was particularly interested in that. If you check out the pace and the elevation plot here, even the smaller climbs on miles 9, 11, and 12 it made it really hard going. I was checking my watch uh, and it set up so that I could see the power rating from my stride pod. And then on the other watch I had heart rate and both of those were just elevated and I was just coasting along really. So way higher effort and power level 
that was needed to sustain those paces. When things got too much, I just eased back and let my heart rate kind of stabilize a bit. And I knew on the last mile, there was a reasonable downhill where I could make up a little bit of time and just propel myself along a little bit faster to the finish. I saw numerous runners falling back as I was going on through the race. Managed to go over the line in one hour, 37.27, so one of the slowest half marathons I've done, but like I said, around about five, six miles or something, I called it and just coasted through. It did remind me a little bit of the previous year where it wasn't quite as hot, but it was still very testing. It's almost easier, I suppose, when you get back into the city and you've got a little bit more cover. I do think that the race could benefit a huge amount by starting it a little bit earlier, maybe if you did a nine o'clock start. This was like a 10.40 start time, and that was for the first wave as well. So if you were waiting in one of the like, later waves, you would have got even warmer out there. Perhaps they could even switch the race to have it a couple of weeks earlier, or pull it back to September, where they did it back in 2021. That was a much better time. I feel that there would be a bit of a fresher feel at the start of the race, and it might attract a few more of these sort of faster runners after PBs. As it stands, it's quite a flat course as well, so it's ideal for that, but just having it in May at this time, it's just not ideal in any way. So Metaspeed Sky Paris held up pretty well. I mean, it could have worn any shoe, really, but these felt good. They were cushioned, they were comfortable. Even at the lower paces, in fact, it didn't really feel out of place. Sadly, I am seeing the ridges in the rubber here are starting to smooth out, and I've got a very smooth feel, actually, across the sort of lateral surface side here there's quite a bit of damage now as well to this exposed midsole foam in the forefoot same can be said here it's smoothed out almost completely on the lateral side of the heel though on the medial side this section here of rubber is absolutely fine i've put a bit of shoe glue on here just to protect this sort of rear portion that seems to be working quite well actually it's provided a little barrier there to protect the exposed midsole foam maybe we've got a slightly different rubber compound here on the medial side of the rubber, I'm not entirely sure, but that's the only real down point to this one right now. Grip still really good and comfort in the upper is fantastic. The lower section of the material certainly, which is underneath the plate, is really compressive now. Perhaps that's the difference really between the sky and the edge, where the edge is a little bit closer to the outsole, I suppose, in the forefoot area. That plate is just positioned a little bit differently. So just something to consider if you're thinking of picking up a pair. Could I have worn a different shoe? Would it have made any difference? Well, probably not really. Other one adding contention was the Alpha Fly 3. I'm not sure the additional bulk and the very sort of knit-like materials would have been particularly good on foot. Though it is quite a breathable shoe in fairness through the actual toe box area. Not sure I would have wanted to drag another couple of ounces of material around with me on either foot that day. Kit wise, I did have a few issues with my Coros heart rate sensor. I did end up moving it further up my arm in the end. I just couldn't get any stable readings. Whether that was down to sweat or the weather conditions, I don't know. Normally, it's absolutely spot on. It was just going up and down. I didn't know what I was doing, really, in terms of effort. At one stage, I left my other watch on wrist-based heart rate, and that seemed to work a lot better, and that isn't always the case for me. One really interesting thing, though, from this race was I used my stride pod, and I was looking at power. I was running spot on in terms of effort up to about four or five miles. There, I could see I was pushing harder, but not getting the pace, so the power was there but ultimately my body was holding back a little bit with a handbrake on so really great to see that judging the effort with the stride pod on a race could be really useful in the future so would i recommend the bristol half marathon for you well i think it could benefit from a date change due to the sheer numbers of people some of the facilities were really overrun kind of makes it a little bit more difficult than it should be and don't feel quite as relaxed and around this time of year you just cannot predict the weather whatsoever i did see sadly a number of runners had collapsed on my way back to my car it was going along part of the route i think around about nine or ten miles I think perhaps more drink stations or spacing them out a little bit more, adding in some emergency ones here and there would have been a good thing to do on the day. Though I did also see a number of runners didn't get medals or goodie bags at the end. It seems a little bit poor and the organisers did mention all the time, you know, that the race had sold out and that was a really great thing. Well, do make sure you got enough stuff to go around if the race has sold out. I think if it was for me, I'd just shift it a few weeks earlier or 
put it to a September date. Not sure I'll be venturing back to this one anytime soon. It's expensive to park there now. If you've got an older vehicle and you're driving into the center of Bristol as well, is that sort of emissions charge. That's the one. So onwards and upwards, there is a local half marathon event going on towards the end of June. It's literally down the road, so easy to get to, a little bit more shade on some country roads and less parking difficulties and it's just as flat as well so more on that one very very soon did you run the great bristol half marathon this weekend maybe you did the 10k instead and you managed to finish before it got too hot did you race anywhere else in the world let us know how you got on down in the comments strangely my voice seems to have improved a bit now it's good news Musical interlude time. One I'd missed from DJ Cuba is called Next Cosmos. This guy is the turntable wizard. He's the master, the maestro. Absolutely love listening to his compositions. He manages to pull together sounds from all sorts of places, sort of sci-fi, cartoon, B-movie stuff, and then mix them up with some absolutely fantastic rough and ready beats. The beats in the first track, Time Bandit, sound like they've been sampled off like a tape or something. They sound incredible, really crunchy and lo-fi. The sound effects used on the track Breakout make you feel like you're trapped within a arcade game and i absolutely love the rolling beats in the tune octagon they sound a little like the incredible bongo band but yeah he's done something to them there some absolutely fantastic work on the turntable there with some of the wording and the phrasing go and check this one out people you will not be disappointed next cosmos by dj cuba thanks for tuning in everybody and putting up with my rod stewart voice hope you enjoyed today's show hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like also don't forget to drop us a comment for the algorithm my name's ed bird and i'll be seeing you